Hello everyone. Today's lesson is Hodgkin's lymphoma. Lymphoma is the third most common cancer among children less than 14 years old. It is the most common cancer in adolescents account for more than 25% of newly diagnosed cancers in those between 50 to 19 years old. There are two broad categories of lymphoma. There are Hodgkin's lymphoma and Lenorchin's lymphoma. As you know, Hodgkin's lymphoma is a type of cancer that affects the lymphatic system, which is part of the body's immune system. Hodgkin's lymphoma affects a component of white blood cell, which is called lymphocytes. Those lymphocytes grow out of control, causing swollen lymph nodes, and they disseminate throughout the body through the lymphatic system. Hodgkin's lymphoma is responsible for 6% of childhood cancer, and the worldwide incidence of Hodgkin's lymphoma is approximately 2 to 4 new cases per 100,000 population per year. The Reed Sternberg cell is a pathognomic feature of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Those cells are large cells with 50 to 45 micrometers in diameter with multiple or multilobulated nucleoli, as you see on the image. These cells is clonal in origin and arise from germinal center B cells, but typically has lost most B cell gene expression and the function. There is no single simple genetic aberrations that leads to malignant transformation of the Reed Sternberg cell, rather a combination of somatic mutations, chromosomal instability, and complex chromosomal rearrangement with no particular pattern of frequency predisposes for malignant transformation. There are two types of Hodgkin's lymphoma, nodular lymphocyte predominant and the classic one. The classical Hodgkin's lymphoma is also further subclassified into nodular sclerosis, mixed cellularity, lymphocyte rich and lymphocyte depleted. Regarding the clinical manifestation, patients typically present with painless, non tender, firm, rubbery, cervical, or supraclavicular lymphadenopathy, and usually some degree of mediastinal involvement. Depending on the extent and the location of the nodal and extranodal disease, patients may present with symptoms and the signs of airway obstruction, pleural or pericardial effusion, hepatocellular dysfunction, and bone marrow infiltration. Systemic symptoms classified as B symptoms that are considered important in staging are unexplained fever, weight loss more than 10% of total body weight over six months, and drenching or severe night sweats. Less common symptoms include pruritus, lethargy, anorexia, or pain. Any patient with persistent, unexplained lymphadenopathy should undergo chest radiograph to identify the presence of large mediastinal mass before undergoing lymph node biopsy. If there is persistent, unexplained lymph node by some infectious process or inflammatory process, you should have to send the patient for chest X-ray. If this is a lymphoma, there is a large mediastinal mass and it is important to do the X-ray before doing lymph node biopsy. Excisional biopsy is preferred over FNAC or needle biopsy to ensure that adequate tissue is obtained before for light microscope and for appropriate immunostochemical and the molecular studies. So always you should have to do excisional biopsy, never fine needle aspiration biopsy. Once the diagnosis of Fortin's lymphoma is established, extent of the disease or stage should be determined to allow select selection of appropriate therapy. In addition, Laboratory studies should be done to know whether the bone marrow is involved or not by doing complete blood count and the bone marrow aspiration and the biopsy. This is how to stage Hodgkin's lymphoma. So we can say stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, and the stage 4, plus or minus B symptoms, the presence of fever, weight loss, and the night sweating. So those staging is important for appropriate management. There are different protocols of management for different stages of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Regarding treatment, chemotherapy and radiation therapy are both effective in treatment of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Treatment of Hodgkin's lymphoma in pediatric patients involved, the use of combined chemotherapy is or without low dose involved field radiation therapy based on response. Treatment is determined largely by disease stage, presence or absence of B symptoms, 
and the presence of bulky nodal disease. Most relapse occur within the first three years after diagnosis, and relapse cannot be predicted accurately with this disease. Poor prognostic features include tumor bulk, stage at diagnosis, extra lymphatic disease, and the presence of B symptoms. Patients who achieve initial chemosensitive response but relapse or progress before 12 months from diagnosis are candidates for myeloablative chemotherapy and autologous stem cell transplantation with or without radiation therapy. This is all about Orchins lymphoma. Thank you for watching.